about your longtime relationship with Steven Spielberg and what makes that work? I have worked with Steven since 1993. So that's a very good relationship that evolves constantly. Every picture we do, we, we discover new things about each other, not just in terms of personalities, but also the creative energy that we build around the project. After making so many movies with him and being with him for such a long time, I personally still discover that he's got so much new untapped creativity that every movie that we do, he amazes me with his new point of view, with the ability to tell the story a different way. So it never became routine. Mm -hmm. And that's what's very exciting to me. So for example, this film, The Post, what did the two of you begin to talk about when he brought it to you? Steven said, I've got this really great story. It's a story about the Pentagon Papers and Washington Post publishing the papers against the government's advice and demand of not publishing the papers. It's going to be with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep, and we're going to start in two months. And of course, I was very excited about it. I knew it's going to be a period movie. I knew I have to figure out what is the language, what is the approach, what is the light, where are the lights coming from, uh, what is the framing, and so forth. All that stuff that we all have to figure out before we make the movie. If we don't hold them accountable, who will? We can't hold them accountable if we don't have a newspaper. Nixon will muster the full power of the presidency, and if there's a way to destroy you, by God, he'll find it. I'm asking your advice, Bob, not your permission. But you can't do this. The legacy of the company is at stake. What will happen if we don't publish? We will lose. The country will lose. How did working with him on this one compare to your early movie, like, for example, when he came to you with For Schindler's List? Usually when you look at Steven's movies, he will have two characters who are the principal characters. So if you think of Lincoln, which was a big uh, canvas picture with very important words coming out of actors, on this movie, you've got more than just Lincoln. You've got five, six characters who are not just doing one main role. They are equally important to to each other. So it was, in that aspect, the movie was very different. I think Stephen was much more focused on, not necessarily on the imagery, but on the content. And he's always focused on the content. But somehow, as we all know, he's such a director that his movies are told through language of camera and, and camera movements and lighting and, and all that stuff. Sure. But here he was very much focused on the content and actor's performance more than not more, it's just different than he was with Lincoln because he've got many actors of, sure. of equal importance. You commented that you wanted your film to look like someone else shot it. Correct, yeah. Um, I mean, often... Explain that for In the past, I would visit Roger on the set and I would see his beautiful lighting and Roger would say, how's that backlight, Janusz? How's that backlight? So no Roger on this movie, no backlight. So, <laughs> yeah. so I think, you know, the idea of deglamorizing the images, I'm always, strangely, I've been always interested in that. I didn't want that classical Hollywood light, you know, a little bit more naturalistic looking. The story was 100% allowed me to do that, you know. And I think to me, the biggest objective was to create images that feel relevant to what's happening right now to us as a nation and what's happening to the press, what's happening with this administration being really, really critical of press and freedom of speech and critical of the constitutional rights of all the citizens. In the picture, there is an original recording of Nixon who says, you know, Neil Sharon, this Sucker, you know, he needs to be fired, you know? And fired is the, is the phrase that this fellow uh, adapted from Nixon. Of course, in 1971, I was not here. When I was in Poland, living in Poland, the Vietnamese were the good guys. So, so this is completely another aspect of demystifying Americans' honesty, because as I was growing up in Poland, this was the beacon of democracy. This was the beacon of truth. So I think whether this was a conscious decision or not, what's happening right now in this administration and what's happening in our movie has direct relations. To, to go back to what you were saying before, did you go to him and say, uh, for this movie, I don't want it to look like I shot it? No, because certain <laughs> things you don't reveal. You know, even after 27, 25 years, you don't want to inform, give too much information because then you subject yourself to being questioned, to being questioned. And sometimes I don't really have an answer. It just feels right. You know, why is that light up there? Uh, what's up there? Why is it bouncing? I don't know. It feels right for the, for the story. Okay, okay, good. So, and I remember during Schindler's List, we're doing one scene at the table where the Jewish family is swallowing diamonds, you know, and there's one top light. And I went to him, look, man, this is dark. I don't know how it's going to come out. And he says, well, it looks really great. You feel liberated, you don't have fear. So mm. same with this movie. You want to take, we all want to take chances because it's not this comfortable life we've chosen where we just make movies and, and we work with movie stars. We express ourselves artistically through our work and you want to take chances. Mm -hmm. So when you work with collaborators who are willing to do this and encourage you to take this, the chances, then it's the ideal thing. That you don't mind you know, having two divorces and 
Because they're making movies is so liberating to some degree. So we didn't talk much. <laughs> Ready? Okay, quiet on set. And okay. I lock down the lens. Yeah. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Margot Robbie. Brian Krantz. Robert Pattinson. John Boyega. I'm Sam Rockwell. Willem Dafoe. Emma Stone. Allison Janney. Guillermo del Toro. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. On YouTube. On YouTube.